need you guys to help me with four scriptures right off, and then we'll get into whatever else we're doing. Mm. I need Matthew 11, 28. Mm. Got it. First Peter 5, 6, and 7. Got it. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Got it. Whoa. <laughs> right. All right. Come on. Praise the Lord. So before we go to praying for anybody, I just want us to go through these scriptures and uh, put you some. Otherwise, they'll have to push it over there. Right? Yeah, you were uh, brave enough to turn it off. That's good. <laughs> Yesterday, it wouldn't start, so oh, no. hallelujah. But he's a really good mechanic. Find out why why our battery keeps going dead now. Yeah. Yeah? Well, if anybody knows how to do that, come to me. Okay. So Matthew eleven twenty eight says this. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, or laborer, or anyway, God going to give you rest. In 1 John 4, 16, it says, um, something. It says, we have known and believed that love, the love that God has for us, God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Amen. Love has been perfected among us in that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the world. Amen. For there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And then in 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7, Somebody said you had that. I do. Okay, I believe. <laughs> Go ahead. Who is that? That's me. Oh, okay. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, <coughs> casting all your cares upon him, for God he bless. cares for you. Amen. Amen. All right. In Isaiah 40, verse 28. Surely you know, surely you have heard, the Lord is the God who lives forever, who created all the world. He does not become tired or need to rest. No one can understand how great his wisdom is. God doesn't get tired. He isn't pushed out of shape. He's not mad. And he's not, he's not sleepy. Okay? And also he says you can cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Not because he's going to beat you up when you cast your cares on him and you can't trust him when you do, but you better worry about it anyway. That wasn't it. Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. And then it says, God is love. Okay? So there is no fear in God. In fact, the thing that he says is that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. So I want you to know that you can have boldness in the day of judgment. You don't have to, gee, I hope I make it. In Matthew 11, 28 says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. These are fairly good promises. Mm -hmm. And it also says, Ask, and you shall receive. <coughs> Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. So this morning, as we go to praying for people or anything else, let's remember that we can cast our cares on God, that He's not tired or, or you know, perturbed with you. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to pray for like two minutes here. I, I, by the way, I'm not going to do all the praying. So if you have something to pray out, just go ahead and sh say it loud. Okay? I realize you guys are very quiet. <laughs> but some of us are fairly mouthy. So, so we're not going to do monologues today. We're just going to pray, okay? So I'm going to pray for two minutes. Okay, you ready? So, Lord, we thank you that we get to come before you. We get to come before your throne of grace. It's not a, a throne of condemnation any longer, God. We thank you, God, for letting us come and present our request to you. With thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord, we do it right now. Lord, we are amazed at what you've already done in our lives. You saved us. You died for our sins. You washed us clean, took our guilt away, our shame, our, our remorse. Thank you for those things, God. Praise your name, Lord. Kora va so shodra si la va shodra si, shora la va drubo si shatra si. Thank you, God. Praise your name, Lord. 
We honor you this morning, God. We honor you this morning. We're worthy of praise. Look at what you've done. Hallelujah. You are a great king, Lord. You are a great leader. And you always guide us and lead us by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We bless your name today, Lord. We bless your name. You are so worthy of our praise. Lord, there are, there are those among us here who have loved ones we're thinking about right now. Loved ones who are broken on the inside. Loved ones who are wounded and need to be healed. So we cry out for those wounded ones, Lord. We cry out for the broken ones, Lord. Fix them, Lord. Fix them, Lord. Restore relationships back in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Oh, we praise you for it, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We got our, our country. We, we cry out for our country, these United States of America, that they would remain united. We pray, Lord, that, that the people who are crazy would repent of their craziness and come back to their senses. We pray for America to come back to its senses in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for prosperity upon our nation again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I know things that, that have been wrong are being exposed right now, Lord. And I thank you for that. Lord, you always, everything that comes to the light is, is taken care of. Thank you, God. And that's right, Lord, we cast our cares on you. These cares for our nation. These cares for our loved ones. These cares for these other people, Lord. We praise you for it. Glory to you, God. Lord, look what you've done, Lord. Hallelujah. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of every breath I could ever breathe. Every thanksgiving I could ever give to you. And Lord, I want you to know the gratefulness in our heart isn't going to stay in our heart. It's going to come out through our mouth, through our singing, through our witness in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Great King. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 120 seconds. I want you to know whatever you're going through if you just take 120 seconds out of your day and just come before the Lord and I'm not saying come before the Lord in some quiet repose okay sometimes you got to talk louder than what you're thinking sometimes you got to speak out louder than what you're thinking because what you're thinking might not be the best groovy thing there is so if you're thinking crappy stuff you need to not think crappy stuff anymore. Just speak out what you believe. Yes. Instead of what you're thinking. And your, your thoughts, I want you to know that what you're saying with your mouth has to come through your thought life. Okay? So you have to change your thoughts in order to speak. <laughs> Woo. And if you could talk fast enough, you talk right past your thoughts. <laughs> See? Yeah, and if you don't, you know, you can... Pray in tongues if you want, for that matter. I mean, but at least, Jesus says, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. He didn't say as you pray, think. He says, say it. So when we're praying together, it's all right if you guys say stuff. <laughs> okay? I'm not the only gaff cat that prays here. I know you guys can yell at your kids. <laughs> I know you can yell at your dog. I know you. Sometimes you just got to talk to the enemy. Yeah, Not a lot. Hallelujah. So, anyway, Exodus, the 20th chapter. Weren't those good scriptures about praying? Yes. 120 seconds. We ought to write a book. 120 seconds. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Sounds like a good title, right? Yeah. Okay. The guy who writes that, I get 10% royalties off that. <laughs> There's a guy who called up uh, Kenneth, K uh, Kenneth uh, Copeland one time. He says, Kenneth, give me a good word from God. He says, why? You want to write a book? <laughs> That's great. I like that. I like that. In other words, get your own dang word from God, you know? <laughs> you know what I... Really, when I go to church in different places, you know what, I want, what I'm going there for? I'm going there for them to pray over me. I love that part. I'm thinking, man, if I'm going to be a guest somewhere, they don't know anything about me. <laughs> that's a good thing, you know? They're not going to... Anyway. Uh, we're different.
different reasons, for different reasons. Penny for all your thoughts, anyway. Okay, so in Exodus, the 20th chapter, Moses has just given the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. Okay? He's just given them the Ten Commandments. So, Lord, I receive from your hand your anointing to preach, <coughs> our anointing to hear the word of the Lord. And I'm not talking about these people I'm talking to, Lord. I'm praying for us that we would hear, understand, and receive the things you say. And so we open ourselves to that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in the 18th verse it says, Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the so sound of the trumpet, the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Now, they're up against this mountain. Anybody ever been in a real thunderstorm? Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> lightning and crash and stuff yeah. like that. So they're in a real thunderstorm. Listen to this. And, and then, then they said the sound of the trumpet. Now, I can blow on this little shofar-looking thing back here, and it will just deafen your ears. It's just the nastiest sound there ever was. But, <laughs> but can you imagine a trumpet loud enough that you start getting scared because it's blowing? <coughs> you sang too much, Keith. That's it. <laughs> All right. So, and so the, when the people saw it, that it smoked... Now here's a mountain, you know God would get arrested for this. Nowadays, Pollute. right? Pollute the atmosphere. Here's a mountain that's smoking like a furnace. So this giant thunder and lightnings and stuff. You ever been in a in a in a fire? Fires create their own their own weather. So in a fire, there's always lightning and crashing and things like that. It's just the most awesome thing. I'm not that I'm a pyromaniac or anything. <laughs> so they have these thunders and lightnings. Now watch this. And Moses and, and they said to Moses, You speak with us and we will hear. But let not God speak to us lest we die. Have you guys ever been in a situation where God looked so fearful to you you didn't want to talk to him? Maybe I preach you really good, but that's the way I look at him a lot. Sometimes I think, man, God is really awesome. I mean, the mountain's on fire, there's lightning, there's thunder, crazy things. I read the Ten Commandments. I'm, I'm toast. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, yeah. We all are. Yeah, come on. Yeah, so, but he said, don't, you, don't let God speak to us once we die. And Moses said to the people, he knew them so well, do not fear, for God has come to test you, and that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. So it ain't a bad thing to be scared enough of God that you don't sin. That ain't bad. I mean, the fear of God kept me from a lot of stupid things in my life. Hallelujah. Now watch this. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. God was in thick darkness. I thought God was light. Yeah, but he has to hide in darkness so he can kill you otherwise. Can you imagine walking through your life and you're in a really dark place and you just can't see and seeking God and seeking God? Well, if it's thick darkness, he might be four feet from you. Right. Yep. Then all you got to do is take one more step and there he is. So don't worry about it if, you're, if your life seems dark. Don't worry about it if your life seems all screwed up and things like that. Uh, if, you, you know, if you need help, come and get it. But. So go over to Hebrews with me. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews 12. This is good. You guys are going to like this. If you don't, it's all right. Hebrews 12. Holy Spirit. Sing this with me. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. Oh yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Hallelujah. So in Hebrews 12, it says in the 18th verse, it says, For you have not come to the mountain, that may be touched, that burned with fire, to the blackness and darkness of tempest, 
and the sound of the trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged that the word would not be spoken to any one of them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. You see this? This is what we just read about. He says, yes, yeah, okay, now watch this. Um, if so much as a beast touches a mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am extremely afraid and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, to the blood of strength, sprinkling that speaks better than that of Abel. <coughs> Hallelujah! This is good stuff. But you, you, you'll notice that back there in, in, in uh, Exodus 20 and here in Hebrews, right before this, he's talking about all the stuff they're doing, being stupid about, right. right? And then he throws in this part. You have not come to the mountain that cannot be touched. You come to this wonderful Mount Zion, Church of the Firstborn. He goes through all those things. And then he over here he says, but don't be stupid. So, don't be stupid. Keep the law, but don't be stupid. Now watch this. Here it is. Don't be stupid, but come to the throne of grace. But don't be stupid. You notice what I'm saying here? Just because we, we are in the, the place of grace doesn't give us the place to be stupid. I, you know what I'm talking about, stupid, right? Okay. I'm not calling you stupid. Don't you go home and say, Matt Collins. <laughs> Matt might have called us stupid, but not you. Okay. So, so this is a test for them. This is a test for them. When Moses says, don't be scared. He just wants you to know how powerful he is. You know, the smoking thing and all that. He just wants you to know if, you know, if he could, he'd kill you all. Yeah. If he wanted to, God would wipe everybody out. God sent Jesus to die for us so he wouldn't have to wipe us out. Yes! Because I believe that every one of us deserved Wiping out. Amen. I figured that out in my own life. I'm seeking God with my whole heart, but I still screw up. And so, I'm not supposed to say screw up. Mess up. Okay? I still mess up. So, I need the grace of God every day. Amen. I need to realize the cross of Christ has washed my sins away every day. So, you know, here I am. Without Him, I'm nothing. So, when I start worrying about my family... When I start thinking about those things that, like that, what I do is I turn back to Jesus and make him everything. Because when he's everything, then everything else makes sense. He's my only hope. He's my only help. He's my only praise. Uh, um, have you ever gone anywhere and you've been with a bunch of people that you really love and they're fighting and all goofed up and on your way home just felt sick? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, even in our lives, we get those things back on us like that, right? And we start thinking that way our whole life. Unless we get healed of that and make Jesus everything, then we'll still put our hope in, gee, I hope these people get along this time. That doesn't work, you guys. That'll goof you up. Because it might not work out that way. So if you put all your hope in God, whether they get along or not, doesn't really matter. That's not the point. He is your hope. And as you get into that place, then you can be effervescent in the midst of all that idiotic arguing and stuff like that. Isn't that cool? You don't have to be one of them anymore. Amen. You don't have to live up to their expectations of you being that little boy or that little girl any longer. You don't have to live up to those expectations. You don't have to live up to the expectations of your family, your children, thinking you, you, you're still that guy that you used to be. That low-life, dirty, rotten dog dude. <laughs> Not that you guys were ever bad fathers and mothers. Lord, Lord, Lord. So, also, down in the 25th verse um, of uh, Exodus, I, don't go back there. He said something about, um, he says, right in the midst of 
adultery, fornication. He says, worshiping on brick altars. He says, when you make an altar, you make it of just stones. And you just light a fire and burn stuff on it. I don't want, he says, if you put a tool on it, it's, it's uh, an abomination. So when we bring stuff to God, we bring stuff to Him according to His way of doing things, not ours. So we don't want to get in this place where we're the guy. Well, look, Lord. Look what I've done. I've got this beautiful altar for you here, Lord. You've been, you know. Okay. How about, girls, this is for you. My house is really clean. <laughs> My house is really clean. Not mine. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get that. You get, you get that, that. That brick altar, right? I can't think of nothing for men because they aren't like that. <laughs> <laughs> My garage. My garage is clean. Oh Lord! Don't say that. <laughs> Your motorcycle is all shiny. <laughs> the motorcycle is shiny with garage mess. Before I was married, I had the I had a motorcycle in the kitchen. Every room, every room. I know you people. I was yeah. married. Yeah. I was married. Yeah, that's, right. that's what happened. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's 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 get out of that. Okay. So, okay, in Acts 15. Uh, the word says that God is restoring the tabernacle of David. Now the tabernacle of David was interesting because the tabernacle of David did not have a curtain in it. Didn't have a... a David went right into where the ark was and worshipped before the ark of the covenant. The same ark that if you went in the tabernacle of Moses, if you went into the holy of holies where the ark was, and you were unworthy, it'd strike you dead. And certainly some king that it wasn't of the tribe of Levi could go in there. It could not go in there. Otherwise, God would strike him dead. The tabernacle of David, David brought that thing back in, set it in a tent, you went in there every day and worshiped the Lord. Amen. In fact, he, he ordained 16 different ministries to worship the Lord that would go 24-7 every day. Made up a bunch of instruments, and every one of those things was not about condemnation, it was not about guilt. It was not about shame. It was simply about the mercy, loving kindness, and ability of God to receive anybody who came to Him by faith. All of those ministries in the tabernacle of David were about mercy and kindness of God. Not one of them was about guilt. You get it? David said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire and took no pleasure in them but a body you have prepared for me. He wants a contrite heart and a broken spirit. All he wants us is to come to him. This is David in the Old Testament, the guy who knew the law. The guy says, says you don't want those sacrifices and offerings. Now that was, the Pharisees were so hung up on that that they, they crucified Jesus for saying anything different. You understand this God that you serve, right? <laughs> you guys are looking at me funny. <laughs> so, not really to get, okay, turn it back up. Okay, this tabernacle of David is an open invitation for hurting people, both in the flock of God and out. This tabernacle of David, the cross of Jesus Christ, is an open invitation for people to come into the kingdom of God. I want you to know it wasn't always this way. Right now, at the end of the age, the age that you guys are in, this age of grace, is the time when anybody can come into the kingdom of God. That's why he said he's restoring the tabernacle of David, so that the Gentiles can come in. Praise the Lord, here we are. I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. In fact, there's been times where I didn't think I was going to make it anyway. I know people who have quit because they knew they couldn't do it. They quit serving God because they knew they couldn't do it. They're honest enough. They just didn't understand the mercy. Didn't understand how God could accept them in the state they were in. None of us were worthy. Yes. But some people will quit because they know they are not worthy in such a state. Like my dad. I ain't going into church. Because I drink. 
there's some people who got thrown out of a church right here in town because uh, they smoked. You can't, you know, you can't smoke and get into heaven. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't get into heaven because you just judge that guy who's smoking. <laughs> 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 and run him off. Oh Lord, have mercy. Yeah, smoking ain't gonna keep you out of heaven. It might get you there early. <laughs> right? Okay. So, so there is a place in Acts, the third chapter. It says, We are refreshed in the presence of the Lord. I was thinking of springs in the desert, right? We, me and Regina go by the source of springs up in the desert. We see a creek come down, so we go to the source so we can get a drink. And I want you to know, by the time, in the summertime, by the time you get to the source of some creek up in the mountains, you're ready for a little refreshing. Because yeah. you're so wiped out you can't even tell. It's, it's, it's up like this. So you, so you get that refreshing. And you know when you drink of that water, it's like drinking life. Yeah. It's so refreshing. You splash it on your face, you pour it on your head, you drink it. It's just the most wonderful thing. There's a refreshing like that that comes from the presence of God. If we come to Him and receive it. This is all about reception. You can... You can not take it or you can take it. Okay? So, in Hebrews 10 it says, these, this, in fact, I'll read it. It says, For the law, having the shadow of good things to come, but not the very image of things, can never, with these sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, year make those approach perfect. The Lamb of God's blood has made you perfect, accepted in the Beloved. Wash clean of your sins. Wiped out the transgressions that were upon you. Sometimes we forget that. Listen, watch this. In Romans it says we are being conformed and transformed into His image. Uh, in Ephesians 2 it says we are fellow, fellow citizens with Him. In Ephesians the fifth chapter, I want you to go over there with me. <coughs> I found this this morning. Watch this. You guys have been to weddings where they quoted this scripture, right? Mm -hmm. Wives, obey your husbands or die. <laughs> no, that is what it says. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> and the 22nd verse says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as Christ is also the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands and everything. Now watch this. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. That he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Do you notice what happened here? The Lord is the one who presents her to himself. You notice that? Watch this, watch this. Let's crack me up this morning. It says that he might present her to himself, a glorious church. That he might present us to himself, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. I don't know about you, but I did not present my wife to me. <laughs> <laughs> right? Her dad brought her to me. Yes. But here it says Jesus is presenting you to himself. <laughs> you guys are looking at me funny. <laughs> that is beyond me. Here's a, here's, I know a guy who took the scripture for his wife. His wife was being crazy. She was going nuts. She was doing all kinds of goofy things. So she she asked him, "Why do you? Why are you still here?" She he he said he said because husbands ought to love their, love their wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her, that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that He might present her to Himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. He decided that he was the one who was to present her to himself without spot or wrinkle and wash her in the word till she was perfect. 
I counsel that guy. I counsel that guy. You should leave that crazy woman. <laughs> Just sing that song. Got along without you before, I met you gonna get along without you now. All right? That's what I counseled him to do. He didn't listen to me, thank God. And they're still together having a great time. Praise the Lord. But he took this scripture to heart. And Jesus is presenting us to himself. And he's the one that's washing us clean. So don't you allow the enemy, if you're trapped in some uh, condemnation about an addiction or, or some circumstances blowing you out or some, some uh, relationship that you're having, okay? Don't let that blow you out of the water. Come to the Lord. He's really good. He's not going to throw you out. He's presenting you to himself. Okay. So we are being transformed. Our destiny, our goal, our place... A salvation is secure for us. Now, in this time, we need to enjoy the journey. We need to enjoy the journey. I wrote down here, um, um, we're all going somewhere, right? Moving towards some destiny. On our way to work. On our way home from work. On our way to the dentist. On our way to court. On our way to a birthday party. On our way to a funeral. Awake. See, we're on our way to something. And if we don't watch it, we will wait till we get there to enjoy ourselves at all. If we're going to something, if we're going something more bad, you better enjoy the journey because when you get there, it's going to be crappy. Right? Right? So what we do, we enjoy the journey. Yeah. So you, you talk to people. How you doing? I'll be better at 4.30. <laughs> what time is it? 8.15. <laughs> you, you, you will miss that in seven and a half hours, you know, come on. It's just, it's, we miss the journey. It's like, I was, I was walking up to a spring just the other day, day for yesterday. I was walking up to spring above Pyramid Lake there. And I had this place I was going in mind. But I was on my way, I want you to know I was enjoying the journey. I wasn't so focused on where I was going, I missed the... Uh, the butterflies and the beautiful flowers and things like that. And you know, on my way, I found a, 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 a can about that big around, about that tall, no bullet holes in it. <laughs> yeah, a porcelain can. It was just bent a little bit. I straightened that out, but Gina's got flowers in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. She loves that stuff. She likes rusty stuff. It's tough on me, you know. I don't have to go to stores. I just go up in the hill. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's it. But you see what I'm saying, right? We're on our way somewhere, and we forget about... You might be going somewhere where it's going to be bad. You might as well enjoy the journey. Otherwise, you just miss it. You just miss it. I don't know how to say this over and over and over and over again. You need to enjoy the journey. Always a new adventure. Always a new adventure. You know, Jesus did most of his ministry on the way somewhere. Right? Yes. Okay. Cleansed lepers, Jairus' daughter, the centurion, all of those things. He did it on the way somewhere. He was going somewhere. You know what I just said? If somebody come up to me, Jairus' daughter, right? He's going over there to heal her. You all right? And this guy shows, and this woman shows up. She's, uh, or some guy shows up. He, he says, you know what I just said? I says, wait your turn, dude. He'll come to your house next, next. He's going to heal my daughter right now. Knock the crap off. You get in line just like everybody else. Right? And so what happens? She dies. I knew it. Right? I knew it. If you wouldn't have been around here, I would have got healed. We get. If you don't enjoy the journey, you'll just think God is is out of control. Yeah. Is God out of control? No. He's got this together, man. He knows what's going on. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Where you step and where you go, if you're serving the Lord, every one of your steps is ordered by God Almighty. What? Yep. Yeah. How cool is that? And he's got this, this cool plan. He can plan your and yours and yours at the same time. How how does how do I show up at a at a at a church over here, some gathering? I didn't feel like worth a crap when I got there, and I meet this girl over there. She's just 
you know, she's with another guy. But I really didn't care. So I just followed her around all evening and just, you know, and then she went out to her car and I followed her out to her car. Her boyfriend was with her. <laughs> she told me later that he, he, he just about beat me up. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> that was Regina. That was Regina. How do I know that? Then the next day she comes over here. She says, we're going to meet together. We're going to minister in the park in music. We meet here. I said, let's pray together. Right here. Right here. Let's pray together. So we prayed together. When we prayed together, she has a vision of us getting married. She got high. Freaked her out, you know. Crazy she didn't tell me that until after we were married. <laughs> Thank God, I'd probably run too. <laughs> but there it was. How does God plan that stuff just at the right time, at the right way? I mean, just on and on. Like you guys can tell story after story after story how God has guided your steps. Yeah. Now, why are we griping? about the things that are happening in our lives. We need to enjoy the journey and just go ahead. Thank you, God, for this. Uh -huh. Praise God in all things. That's right. What about when you come to a stoplight and it changes? <coughs> Yellow. Stop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> what if it actually turns yellow soon enough do you have to stop, right? Do you thank God for that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, now you do. But before, man, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. That you guy know. in front of me would have been faster. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, if I finally realized that I finally learned it just the other day. Because I, I was coming to a stoplight, and it, it was green. And I went right through it. I said, thank you, Lord. I said, I'd have thanked you anyway. And I would have. I come to another stoplight and turn red, and I thank you, Jesus, what is this one for? I got all excited about it. So everything that happens to us, flat tires, it doesn't matter. Yeah, could be. So we need to enjoy the journey. Okay, so just a couple more things here. Yep, yeah. Okay, so yeah, go to Luke 10 with me. We're just about done. A couple more scriptures. I hope this made sense. It sure made sense to me when I was studying it. Kind of back saying, well, thank God for letting you study it. <laughs> you there in Luke 10? In the 17th verse it says, The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons were subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you all authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And another place says, your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Woo, hallelujah. The Lamb's Book of Life. It's not the Lamb's Book of Condemnation. It's not the Lamb's Book, it'd be better keep your act together. It's the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you get this, this is what God showed me today. If you get this, my name is written. My destiny is sure. Now my life is hid with Christ in God. So if my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'm there in the Lamb's Book of Life, I can pray back from heaven instead of from here. Instead of begging, come on in, huh? Instead of begging God to do something, come on down here, God, do something. I can pray back from heaven and speak things into existence from there instead of here. It's really tough for me sometimes to pray because, you know, I haven't got my act together. And so I think, well, I hope God hears me. Instead, I realize my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, so I can pray back from there. Lord, I, I'm sitting here with you now. That's a really powerful place. I remember Peggy was praying for her, her uh, I think it was a pigeon. I'd have shot the pigeon. <laughs> Peggy take, takes and tapes it together, you know, and it heals in two days, and then the pigeon flies away. But she's praying for healing for that pigeon. Praise the Lord. Thank God for people like Peggy, you know. <laughs> okay. Now, um, okay. 
Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And by the way, if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you can run demons off. And by the way, if your name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, uh, you'll worship the beast. I read that this morning. All whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will worship the beast. So we need to have our hearts right with God. We need to ask Jesus to wash our sins away, to cleanse us from our guilt and our shame, and ask Him to take over our lives. Amen. He actually does it. Do you remember when you got saved? This wasn't... This, this is what doesn't happen. I explain to you exactly the way it should be, and you understand it with all your mind, and you, and you say, yeah, okay, I understand that, therefore I'm going to change. No, no, no. You, you ask Jesus to save you, and he comes and saves you and changes your life from the inside out. It just is... I remember. I went from being this guy... The next day I was this guy, smiling all the time, wanted to go to church, wondering why I wasn't cussing, wondering what, the, what, what is going on, hugging everybody? <laughs> Irma used to think I was strung out on, you know, anybody's happy as you has got to be smoking in the boys' room. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't anything I tried to do, it was something God did in me. Amen. When I gave my life to Him, He changed me. It just and it just the way it is. It's a supernatural thing. Amen. It's absolutely supernatural. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you right now. In, fa in fact, pray with me. God, God, I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that washed my sins away. He took my place. He took my place. I'm in your family now. I'm going to love you and serve you the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to do this. I forgot. Praise the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for letting us give today. The fans still work, the lights are still on. Thank you, God. The roof doesn't leak. So, Lord, I thank you for your economy that always works. We give like hilarious people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord. Well, you guys, I think next week we should meet out in the parking lot at 10 o'clock. Okay. It's one service. Because it's going to be 80 degrees. It's perfect. Okay, so next week, one service, 10 o'clock. Okay? Okay. Okay. So if anybody doesn't know, please help them up. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Hi. I'm Matt. Sophia? How are you? Oh, you know Keith? I just came today because of my Oh, okay. Okay. Okay.